Hello everyone, and welcome to the Adas Platform Channel. In this video we're going to analyze stop patterns and identify the most effective ones. This will help you to analyze the market more professionally in real time and recognize potential reversals. We're also going to select the indicators necessary for analyzing stop bars, so stay tuned. All the examples in this video are based on CME Gold Futures with the GC ticker. When choosing a time frame, it's best to focus on the range between 15 minutes to 4 hours for these patterns. The instrument analysis shows that time frames below 15 minutes may not have enough volatility to find quality patterns, while anything above 4 hours has too much a time lag in candle formation, resulting in fewer quality patterns. The risk also increases when trading in higher time frames. We are going to look at 30 minute and 5 minute time frames for a detailed analysis at the end of the video. To spot a top pattern, you'll need a cluster chart that shows total volumes as a histogram. While a standard chart can work, it's much harder to visually pinpoint volume clusters just by looking at the numbers. The key idea behind a stop pattern is to find candles with a volume cluster that blocks the price from continuing in its original direction. You can look for either the highest volume in the candle or volume clusters. We're going to use clusters of levels, as they're usually more insightful than single levels. The basic mechanics of the pattern involve a strong upward or downward movement, followed by a stop or not just a stop, but a pullback in the opposite direction. In the first example, we can see the price moving upward under buying pressure, followed by a slight pullback from the high toward the middle of the candle. The candle closed within the volume cluster, signaling that the price couldn't move any higher at that point. In the second example, we see a more aggressive pattern. The price moved downward for 30 minutes under selling pressure, but the candle closed at the opening price and above the volume. The seller didn't make any progress during that 30-minute period. As you can see, both of these are stop patterns, but in practice, the second pattern is much more powerful and interesting than the first. Now, let's look at a market section where the price was in a local uptrend before reversing into a downtrend. We can spot seven stop patterns. The first five occurred during the uptrend. The first one is an example of the first type of stop pattern, where there's no significant pullback in the candle after a directional move. This results in a brief pause, followed by the trend continuing and breaking through the volume cluster. The second pattern in the down candle shows a strong upward pullback after the initial downward move, with a clear volume cluster that prevented the price from falling further. As you can see, this pattern led to a reversal, and the price continued its uptrend. The fourth pattern, like the first, doesn't show much of a pullback and doesn't result in a strong upward move. However, the third and fifth patterns have solid pullbacks, even though the candles themselves aren't highly volatile. Despite that, the price didn't break through the clusters in these candles, and like the second pattern, they also resulted in reversals. The sixth pattern, like the first and fourth, didn't offer much resistance to the market. It didn't form a significant cluster, although the highest volume was near the close. The seventh pattern also showed a strong pullback after the upward move. The candle closed near the cluster, and after that, the downtrend resumed. In the end, out of the seven patterns, the first, fourth, and seventh only had a short-term impact on the price. If you had traded them, they would have resulted in losses. That's why we'll focus only on more reliable patterns with noticeable pullbacks. Let's take a look at how the presence of a trend affects the effectiveness of stop signals. It's important to understand whether stop patterns should be ignored when they appear against the trend, and whether we should disregard patterns with short wicks, which might seem less reliable than those with longer wicks. Every trader should have their own method for identifying trends, but we'll use two indicators to help analyze stop patterns. Moving Average and Super Trend the rules are simple, if the price is trading above the moving average, and the super trend shows an uptrend, the trend is bullish. If the price is below the line and the super trend signals a downtrend, the trend is bearish. If the indicators show opposite signals, the market is likely ranging or uncertain. We'll set the moving average period to 30, as this provides timely reversal signals while often holding the price during tests and creating bounce opportunities. In the super trend settings, we'll also set the period to 30 and the multiplier to 3.5. These parameters give the market more room to form trends. You can adjust these settings depending on how frequently you want to see trend reversals. We'll focus on three specific sections of the market that had a clear uptrend or downtrend. We'll ignore areas of uncertainty. Let's break down the first half of the first section. The filters show us an uptrend. 
During this section, we can see three groups of stop patterns preventing the price from falling. The first group, consisting of two patterns, almost immediately caused an upward bounce, meaning the price was held and reversed. The first pattern was broken, but the second one quickly gave buyers another chance. The next pattern also stops the correction and prevents the price from moving lower. However, the trend doesn't continue, and the price enters another correction. This time, the stop pattern is broken to the downside. After that, another stop pattern forms, which once again stops and reverses the price. This time, the market shifts into an uptrend. As we can see, three out of five patterns provided a better entry point just before the reversal. This suggests that in a trending market, stop patterns often signal the end of a correction. Regarding the patterns that stop the upward movement, we can divide four of them into two types. Those with long wicks, which are highlighted now, and those with short wicks. Long wicks indicate that the market is likely to enter a correction. However, expecting large downward moves doesn't make sense in an uptrend, still, these signals can provide short-term pullbacks. The patterns with short wicks were broken without providing any significant price bounces. We can assume that short wick patterns perform worse because there is no counter-response from the opposing side. For example, if we have a bullish bar controlled by buyers, aggressive sellers would typically push the price down, causing a pullback. However, if that doesn't happen, we only get partial signals of strength, the formation of volume and a candle that buyers cannot push higher. At the same time, there are no sellers interested in driving the price down. Now let's look at the second half of the first section with the uptrend. After the impulse, we see two stop patterns with long wicks down, which immediately lead to new upward impulses. Then, two more patterns appear, showing where the price is being held in the market, and they continue the uptrend right away. Throughout the second section, there was only one stop pattern to sell, which was immediately broken to the upside, yet it preceded the price's stop and the transition into a flat. To summarize the analysis of the patterns from the first section, we can categorize them as follows. The highest quality stop patterns are those that align with the trend. Stop patterns against the trend with long wicks indicate the start of a correction. Stop patterns against the trend with short wicks are the weakest and should generally be ignored. Now, let's take a closer look at the third section with the trend. When the signal from the moving average and the super trend indicator aligned with the downtrend, the first bearish pattern with a long wick appeared. After it closed, the moving average changed color, but technically, the pattern was well-placed and didn't completely break the trend. In the end, it triggered a strong and rapid downward movement. Next, a bullish stop pattern formed, temporarily halting the trend and causing a slight correction. During the following impulse, two bullish patterns with long wicks emerged. The first pattern was broken, but a second pattern quickly formed on the next candle. This led to an extended correction and stopped the trend. During the correction, four bearish stop patterns with short wicks formed, and none of them led to a resumption of the trend. The price quickly broke through them and continued to move upward. After the price stalled, bullish stop patterns with long wicks appeared. As we can see, these patterns also contributed to the continuation of the correction and temporarily held the price from falling. A new impulse was triggered again by a bearish stop pattern, which was the fifth in a series of bearish patterns. However, after it formed, the price almost immediately shifted into a downward impulse. Following this impulse, a bullish stop pattern with a short wick emerged. It preceded a price halt but was also quickly broken. In summary, the second section with the downtrend looks a bit different from the first section, primarily due to the nature of the movement. It's well known that in the futures and stock markets, prices tend to fall faster and harder than they rise during an uptrend. This volatility and speed meant we didn't encounter patterns during the main part of the decline that would have allowed us to enter the market during the correction. The only exception was the very first bearish pattern, which marked the beginning of this trend. Another noteworthy aspect is that we saw a sequence of four bearish patterns in a row that didn't lead to a downtrend. In the first section with the uptrend, the market generated stop patterns during pullbacks, and the price quickly moved upward. This series of failures is likely because these patterns appeared when the downtrend was already losing momentum, suggesting that a string of unsuccessful patterns might signal the end of a trend. But we got confirmations for the first section. Stop patterns against the trend with long wicks almost immediately lead to the start of a correction, although they can be slightly broken by the price. Patterns with short wicks rarely provide a bounce or reversal and are almost always broken. Let's have a look at a different section where we have an uptrend again. 
This means that there's a higher chance of finding entry points during pullbacks compared to downtrends. Let's see if that holds true. On the screen, we've highlighted three bullish patterns that were broken shortly after they formed. The first pattern preceded a small movement, but it wasn't a strong trending impulse, and soon after, the price corrected and broke through it. Interestingly, all three of these patterns had long wicks. Typically, long wicks and patterns aligned with the trend tend to precede an impulse and prevent the price from breaking through. We also had two stop patterns that halted the correction, and after they formed, the market attempted to continue the trend. The first pattern wasn't followed by a strong impulse, but it occurred at the end of the correction, so it can be considered successful. The second bullish pattern led to the start of an upward move. Before it, there were two candles with structures similar to stop patterns, which could also be included in the statistics, though they lacked significant volumes in the wicks, so we've only partially counted them. Every trader can interpret this in their own way, but there are some common trends. In the case of counter-trend stop patterns, four out of seven bars led to a pause in correction, while the other three were broken. In the second part of the uptrend, there were four bullish stop patterns. Two of them, with long tails, marked on the chart, triggered strong upward moves and turned out to be great buying opportunities. The other two were broken by the price, though the second one appeared near the end of a correction. The initial bearish stop pattern shifted the market into a correction, but the next two were ignored by the market and the uptrend continued. It's important to watch for situations where, after a long trend with several upward impulses, a series of bearish stop patterns starts forming. In this example, the patterns reflected market conditions that led to a trend reversal, as the price dropped sharply after four consecutive stop patterns. We've covered a wide range of patterns, both with the trend and against it, and we can conclude that most stop patterns with long tails either halt impulses or show up at the end of corrections. Not all stop patterns reverse the market, and some get broken by price action, but the risk-to-reward ratio in a trending market usually favors the trader. Since stop patterns often signal corrections, they provide good opportunities to partially or fully close positions during a trend. We hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe.